Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and welcome to another episode of Flurf Say the Darndest Things. Well, recently I had a look at their claim of cold moonlight and thoroughly debunked that, and today we're going to look at another one of their silly claims, and that is that the Earth's atmosphere extends to the moon. Therefore, since the moon is in the Earth's atmosphere, it is local. So here's the article that they brought up. Earth's atmosphere stretches out to the moon and beyond. And it's from the European Space Agency from 2019. Let's have a look at it. Now, as we look at this claim, let's keep in mind the five characteristics of science denial. Characteristic number one is cherry picking. Number two is conspiratorial thinking. Number three is promotion of fake experts over real experts. Number four is poor deductive reasoning and scientific reasoning. And number five is an inappropriate expectation of perfection from science. So as we look through this claim and see what's in the actual article that they are citing, let's keep these characteristics in mind. So here is the article in question. It's from the European Space Agency, and it's dated in 2019, and it's called The Earth's Atmosphere Stretches Out to the Moon and Beyond. Now the first thing that we should do is have a look at the illustration for the article. There's a nice spherical Earth orbited by a nice spherical moon in orbit about the sun. And if you click on this image, it brings up the full image and you see the direction to the sun. You see the satellite in orbit that is taking these images and it kind of gives you an idea of how it does it. It runs a beam through the exoatmosphere and uh, detects hydrogen. The other thing that's really nice about this illustration is that it shows the shape of the exoatmosphere. Notice it's kind of oval or egg shaped with a thin side towards the sun and the thicker part on the night side of the earth. Notice, however, that the orbit of the moon, which is clearly shown here, is well within the exoatmosphere in both locations. So right off the bat, we get a nice demonstration of science denial cherry picking. The article that they are citing, they are citing, clearly shows the earth to be a sphere and an orbit around the sun, with the moon being in orbit around the earth. Notice how they want to pick up on the headline about the atmosphere, but completely ignore the rest of the data in the article. Now, in the very first paragraph of the article, notice what it says. The outermost part of our planet's, planet's atmosphere extends well beyond the lunar orbit, almost twice the distance to the moon. Now, that's a very interesting statement because it tells us that the moon is quite a ways away, but the atmosphere extends even further. Now, if it were to give a measurement of how far away the moon was, or take measurements at a certain distance from Earth, we might get some clues as to how far away the moon is. Now, moving on a little bit, it says that these observations are from a satellite that is a joint European Space Agency-NASA project. And also notice that the lead author is from the Russian Space Research Institute. But more importantly, we have some numbers here. What do these numbers tell us? It says that the gaseous layer of the, of the atmosphere wraps around the Earth up to 630,000 kilometers away, 50 times the diameter of our planet. Now this leads to some very interesting questions to the thinking person. The diameter of the spherical Earth is twice 6371 kilometers. Now, astute flat earthers, if there are any, would have already noticed a couple of problems with these measurements. If you are looking at a flat Earth map, what is the distance from the North Pole to the equator? It's 69 statute miles per degree, or 60 nautical miles, or 111 kilometers. Take your pick. Multiply that by 90 because there are 90 degrees from the North Pole to the equator, and you have a little bit of a problem. You have the distance from the North Pole to the equator. Doubling that distance and multiplying it by pi gives you the circumference of the equator. Does that match the circumference of the equator on Earth? Inquiring minds want to know. And when talking about the moon, what is the Earth diameter that they're talking about? Are they talking about the diameter of the spherical Earth? Or are they talking about the diameter of the Gleason map? Now, of course, in reality, the Earth is a sphere, and the diameter of the spherical Earth is a little over 12,000 kilometers. The distance from the Earth to the moon is about 30.6 Earth diameters. 
and that 50 being described as almost twice the lunar distance, you've got some really good clues here to figure out the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The article itself talks about the ultraviolet telescope being placed by the Apollo 16 astronauts in 1972, and it actually even has an image from that ultraviolet telescope showing what's called the geocorona, which is the extended atmosphere of the Earth. And it said at the time they were unaware that they were actually in the outer reaches of the geocorona themselves. So not only do we have confirmation of the distance from the Earth to the Moon, the sphericity of the Earth, including a picture, and the fact that we're orbiting around the Sun, it also talks about the fact that we've actually been to the Moon and taken images through a telescope from the Moon. Notice that there were also stars in that image. But a couple of paragraphs later, the article says something very interesting for those with deductive reasoning skills. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It says here the denser dayside regions of hydrogen is still very sparse, with just 70 atoms per cubic centimeter at 60,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Now, this is a measured value. And about 0.2 atoms at the Moon's distance. Now, why is this interesting? We know that on Earth, under the influence of Earth's gravity, the denser air is closer to the surface of the Earth, and as you go up in altitude, be it to a mountaintop or up in an aircraft, the air becomes thinner and the density goes down significantly. That's because there are proportionately fewer air molecules per cubic centimeter at high altitudes than they are at sea level. And deductive reasoning tells you that if the density is 70 atoms of hydrogen at 60,000 kilometers, and 0.2 atoms per cubic centimeter at the distance to the moon, the distance to the moon is considerably further than 60,000 kilometers. Hence the fact that density of the hydrogen at that distance is 1 350th of what we have at 60,000 kilometers. Oh, and just to kind of make sure that we have a little frosting on the cake, he goes on to say that on Earth, we would call it a vacuum, so this extra source of hydrogen is not sufficient enough to facilitate space exploration. So we can't really use this atmosphere for anything that we would normally consider uh, using an atmosphere for, such as breathing, uh, flying in an aircraft other than a spaceship, or even trying to collect it to create hydrogen fuel for future space missions is that because ultraviolet light from the sun causes this to glow slightly, it could potentially cause interference with future space-based telescopes. Now with my telescopes here on Earth, I deal with light pollution quite a bit, and I use special filters on the telescope to try and reduce the impact of that light pollution. This is basically light pollution in space, and the purpose of the article was to discuss it and mention the fact that we may need to come up with some better filters to get clearer images of space taking this into account. Now the article finishes talking a little bit about the SOHO satellite, which is located at Lagrange Point 1, which is one and a half million miles from Earth on a line from the center of the Earth to the center of the Sun. This is a particularly advantageous orbit. There's also Lagrange 2, where the James Webb Telescope is currently located. It is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth in the opposite direction, out past the orbit of the Moon. And for those of you interested in reading the original paper, well, here's the link to it right here, and you can just pull it right up and read it. It's uh, quite extensive. It's also very, very technical and quite dense, and it goes back to multiple observations going back to the 1990s. So once again, MC Toon's first law of FLIRF, and that is that all, all flat earth citations disagree with the flat earth, holds true in this case. This brings up the point. Um, this is an excellent example of cherry picking. Uh, the flat earthers that presented this article, to me of all people, only read the headline. They didn't bother looking at the rest of the article, which disagrees with their point. Furthermore, they didn't apply any basic deductive reasoning to realize that this article is clearly saying that the moon is at least 25 Earth diameters away from the Earth. So there's a lot of meat in this article that a true truth seeker would have picked up on. But flat earthers are not truth seekers. 
they are promoting an agenda and reading a script. And if they see an article that has a, a headline that they think somehow supports their claim, they'll happily cite it, praying that somebody like me won't actually pull the article and read it. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll put these out periodically. I've been doing a lot of work over on my STEM channel on slide rules, mathematics, and physics. But I will come back here periodically and have a little bit of fun because, as we all know, flat earthers say the darndest things.